what is going on everyone welcome to the video so for you guys who haven't been following me for that long about a year ago I put out a video that was called something like I've trained arms every day for one year and in that video I showed an experiment that I was doing where at the end of every workout even lower body workouts I would make sure that I hit arms like I'm doing right here and it's nothing too crazy it's three sets of biceps three sets of triceps about 15 to 25 reps each close to failure and the reason I was doing this was because arms had always been a body part that really just did not grow for me. I tried everything. I tried heavier weight with less sets. I tried more sets with lighter weight. But the one thing that I never tried to do was very high frequency. So that's what I tried to do. So on my upper body days, I already hit arms, so I didn't change anything there. But on my lower body days, like squat and deadlift day, I started doing arms like you see here. I typically do dumbbell curls and then a tricep machine like this. I don't usually use this particular one, but someone was using the one that I usually use. But this is basically close to what I do. And in the first year, my arms grew about half an inch doing it, even though I didn't gain any weight. And in the second year, I think they grew about another quarter of an inch. So right now my arms are about 15.75 inches. And I didn't really gain any weight during this time. So my arms grew a very good amount, considering the fact that I didn't really gain any weight. And I do attribute it to the higher frequency arm training. So I wouldn't recommend doing something like that for like chest or back because it's too taxing on your body. But if arms are a struggling body part for you and you've tried everything, even side delts or rear delts, I think it wouldn't be a bad approach to maybe do some arms or do some light lateral raises or rear delts at the end of your workout if you're really struggling with those areas. So I've been training arms every day for every workout for two years and I'm going to keep doing it. Um, so anyway, this is my deload week. We are actually going away next week. So while you're watching this, we are actually in Virginia Beach in Williamsburg, Virginia. So I always like to plan my deloads or my weeks off while I'm away. So what I did this week was I compressed, I moved my workouts up a day, I compressed my deloads a little bit so that when I go away, there's not really much I have to do. So this squat workout's a day earlier than usual. And then the next day, which I didn't film, I combined bench with deadlifts so that when I go away, I don't really have to do anything. Uh, on the on the deloads, what I typically do, I do five sets on the main lift, and for the percentages, I do 50% on my first set of my one rep max, then 60%, and then 70%. And on the 70%, which is the heaviest I go, which is right here, 275 pounds, I actually do this set three times. So. Uh, on 531, he has like a f multiple options you could use. There's a 40, 50, 60% where you only do three sets total. And then the one that I do is you could do 50%, 60%, 70%. However, rather than stop there, I do the 70% three times. Just because I feel like the three sets is really nothing. Even the five sets feels like nothing, but at least it's better than the three sets. And the reason I like doing uh, the deload rather than just take a complete week off, because I always feel like when I take a complete week off, when I come back to lifting, it feels awkward, everything feels heavy, whereas if you at least do something in that week off, it doesn't feel as awkward when you get back. But like I said, I'm going away, so I don't really plan to lift while I'm away. So I just try to com uh, combine some deload workouts ahead of time just to make sure I get those out of the way. But the point of a deload is to give your body recovery, so you don't want to overthink it. Give your body a break. Uh, that's for the main lifts. As far as the accessory lifts, what I do, I figure out the amount of weight that I typically do for 10 reps, and then I take 70% of that, and I still do 10 reps. Keep the sets and everything else the same. So you're going to see I do leg press in a little bit. I figure out that I think I typically do like 500 pounds on leg press for 10 reps. So I just I took out my phone for the calculator. I did 70% of 500 pounds. I didn't put like two and a halves on or anything to get exact, but I just put the weight on that's close to 70%. And I did 10 reps of that. So like I said, nothing crazy. The idea is to give yourself a break. So that's what I'm doing. Just go in, do something, and then get out. You could deload however really you want, but that's the way I personally do it. You don't want to go too hard where you defeat the purpose of the deload. And if you want, you could take a complete week off, which I've done before. And I will. this is kind of like a half deload, half week off because I'm going to be going like four days without being in the gym. So I figured I'd get the deload out before we go away. Um, but anyway, the workout footage is wrapping up. If you guys like the video so far, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber yet, I don't know what you're waiting for, subscribe. Uh, stick around for the rest of the video. I do show a little bit of a, I guess you could say a mobility that I do. And I also show the meal that I typically eat after the gym. So stick around and again, hit the thumbs up. I'll appreciate it. Subscribe and I'll talk to you guys in the next clip. 
Alright guys, so I didn't want to leave you hanging just with that boring workout footage. So I wanted to show you something that I've been doing for a little bit of time now. By the way, do you see this shirt? Do you even Leviosa? It's a pretty good shirt. Um, so a few months ago, I mentioned how I had very tight glutes and when I would squat, I kind of had some pain and it was very uncomfortable. I didn't really know what was causing it. So what I started doing was using this lacrosse ball. And now, I'm not an expert. This isn't a full mobility routine. I'm not a doctor. But ever since I started doing what I'm about to show you, I've had absolutely no pain while squatting, no pain at all like in this glute, hip, leg, quad region. So I, I do think this is the reason. And pretty much what I do is I don't do my whole body, but I roll it on my quad and I roll it on like my glute area, both sides. I'll show you just one side. And I wait till I feel the knot. Is when you, once you feel a knot, it really hurts. I hold it there for about 30 seconds, move it around a little bit, and I do that across my whole quad and on my glute. So basically, hold on, stay on this side. So basically, I put the ball on the floor. Hard surface is more important, so you get a better like push. I just put it on my quad, and I find a, I roll it around, and then eventually, right there. Right here I find a spot where it really hurts and I relax my quad and I just let the ball sink into the muscle and you feel like the knot like breaking up and it's hard to talk because it really hurts and makes me really sway and I know it doesn't look hard but it's very difficult. And you might, be heard, you might have heard of foam rolling. This is basically foam rolling but this thing is harder than a foam roller and it's more direct so I can find the exact knot and push on it so I like this better. And then for the glute, I basically do the same thing. I just sit on it. I, I like to, if you cross your foot like up like this kind of, you get more pressure. And you just think that you find the knot and you push on it. So I've been doing this now for about six months, I want to say. When I first started doing it, it was excruciating. I had so many knots. I, got, I, I wouldn't be able to talk right now during this video because I was like crying. But now that I've been doing it twice a week, I do it. Um, it's much easier to do. and. Even though it still hurts, it's not as bad as it was. So if you have any pain while squatting, uh, while you go down, you feel any tightness, I recommend doing this. You can do it on other body parts as well. I just, honestly, I don't, that's no, I don't have any reason for it. So just wanted to show you that, show you the shirt. And the next clip, I'm gonna show you my post-workout meal because I just got back from the gym, did this, gonna shower. Well, I'm gonna do this for real, I just wanted to show you. Then I'm gonna shower, then I'll eat, and I'll show you that. Alright guys, so this is typically the meal that I have when I get back from the gym. I don't have a protein shake or anything. I come home, I shower, and then about an hour, that rhyme, later I have this. This is two whole eggs, 200 grams of egg whites, some spinach, cheese, tomato, five slices of 40 calorie whole wheat toast. As far as the eggs and egg whites, typically if I need more fat for the day, I'll have more eggs and less egg whites. If I need less fat, then I'll have more egg whites and less whole eggs. So it's always a combination of both. I've been eating this for a while. If you see my day of eating videos, I've eaten this a lot because I like it. It's convenient and it tastes good. So I have this. Also have a plain black coffee that I will drink with it, and that's basically it. Today I, I'm having less eggs, more egg whites because we're going out for dinner later, so I'll be having more fat there. So that's really the reasoning behind it, and that's going to conclude this video. So by the time you guys see this video, we will actually be on vacation in Virginia Beach and in Williamsburg, so we're excited about that. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. I will eat this before it gets cold or it's probably cold already. And I'll see you in the next video.